I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday. In last week's video, which you can view here, I posed the following question to you. What is the mechanism or a plausible mechanism for this chemical transformation? So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video and see if you can come up with the steps that make up the mechanism of this transformation. And make sure to stick around to the end because I'll give you another question that you can find on next week's video. The very first step in this chemical transformation is protonation of this nitrogen, which allows us to generate water. In doing so, we are going to create a positively charged nitrogen at this position because it has been protonated and the rest of the molecule looks basically the exact same. So this is how we generate the first intermediate and we can draw in the rest of our molecule just like this. From here, remember that these electrons contained on other nitrogen atoms are delocalized and can allow us to move electrons along this cyclic ring. This is going to regenerate a neutral nitrogen at this position However, importantly, it is also going to generate a new positively charged nitrogen species, which has created this new double bond. So here the nitrogen will be positively charged and everything else will remain the same. At this stage, we've created an electrophilic carbon position. And remember, we generated water in this first step, so that water can actually come in and attack what is effectively a carbonyl carbon. From here, these pi electrons will go back to the nitrogen atom, allowing us to make this a neutral nitrogen. And this is going to give us our next intermediate, which is going to again contain this neutral nitrogen here, another neutral nitrogen at this position because we've placed those pi electrons back on nitrogen, and it is going to be attached to a carbon with now an OH2 group on it. And because OH2 exceeds the valency of oxygen, this oxygen is now gonna be positively charged. Importantly, the rest of the molecule remains the same, so we just draw that in. And at this stage, another water molecule will come in and deprotonate this OH2 group to make a neutral alcohol species. Now importantly, remember that each of these nitrogens are actually alkylamines, which are pretty basic. And in fact, they're nucleophilic, which means that when we generated OH3 plus here, what we've done is we've created a site where this nucleophilic nitrogen will come and deprotonate our newly formed acid to make another water molecule. And from here, this creates our molecule, which is actually going to be the one that liberates, and hopefully you can start to see the part of the group where now we're, we are generating our formaldehyde because we have this alcohol here that has lone pairs on it and the rest of the molecule looks basically the same. However, remember these electrons in this lone pair on the oxygen can come down and actually kick off these electrons back to nitrogen to make it neutral. And notice that it is effectively cleaving this new carbon nitrogen bond to actually leave us behind with the species that eventually after deprotonation is what becomes our formaldehyde. So all that needs to happen now is another water molecule just needs to come in and deprotonate this group to make our formaldehyde. And importantly, this leaves behind this, the rest of this species, which can go undergo subsequent transformations to go all the way to ammonia and multiple molecules of formaldehyde. For next week's episode of Mechanism Monday, I'm gonna ask you to provide a plausible mechanism for this chemical transformation. Drop it as a comment down below or even remix this video so I can see how you solve the mechanism. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next Monday for our next episode.